very warm welcome to Cramond Kirk on a wet morning. We hope you're going to enjoy the service and if you're able, I invite you to stand with me as the Bible enters the sanctuary. Please stand. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of us. A warm welcome to those who are worshipping from home and to all those gathered in Cram and Kirk today. Notices are printed for those here in the church, but for those at home, I bring one or two to your attention. Um, the parish profile seeking to attract a new minister to Cramond is now on our website and so you can see the detail there. We're having a silent auction and looking for gifts for that. That's going to be in November. Today and next Sunday, we're raising money for the Libyan flood appeal and you'll find an envelope in your order of service and we would invite you to make a donation and leave it either at the end of the service or next week for Christian aid supporting the Libyan flood appeal. We've got the men's coffee and bacon roll morning coming up, details are given, and two deaths to report. We mentioned Professor Bill Duncan last week. His service of Thanksgiving will be here at four o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Bill was here for a reasonably short time, but made a big impression on those who knew him, and you'll be very welcome to attend that service. And Mrs. Jessie Armit, a long-term member, has died and her service will be on Saturday the 21st at 11 o'clock at Morton Hall. Flowers today are from Joe Thompson and Lindy, Lindsay Latona. These are all the notices other than to say our prayer diary is available. We invite you to use that in your personal devotions. Let us now worship God and we use the psalm for today for our call to worship and Jane is going to lead us. Let us worship God. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its branches to the sea and its shoots to the river. Why then have you broken down its walls so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it and all that move in the field Feed on it. Turn again, O Lord of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine. The stock that your right hand planted. The central message in the readings today is valuing God's vineyard. And the story is the tenants in the vineyard. We continue to worship God by singing together. The morning hymn, Awake my soul and with the sun, your daily stage of duty run.
to approach God in prayer. And during our prayer, as part of our response to God, we're going to sing the first verse of Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. The words will be on the screen and the choir and organ will lead us. Let us, with confidence, approach God in prayer. Please be seated. Eternal God, keeper of the vineyard, as we gather in your presence today, we acknowledge that you are the loving vineyard keeper who tenderly cares for your people. Throughout history, you have nurtured us with your providence and guidance, calling us into loving relationships. In this ancient sacred space, we want to know you more deeply to understand the path that you lay before us. We recognize that as your beloved vineyard, we have not always borne the fruits of righteousness and justice as we ought. Forgive us, Lord, for the times we have turned away from your guidance and pursued our own desires. this worship, our singing, our reflecting, and our praying be a rich offering. We submit our lives to your loving guidance that we ourselves may be a fruitful vineyard reflecting your glory to the world around us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and friend. Amen. Boys and girls in church and at home, not too many years ago, there were no computers, there was no daytime television, and on a wet day like yesterday, families had to amuse themselves, and they would bring out Ludo and games and Formula One and Monopoly and they would play all kinds of things. Cards were very popular but families after playing those a few times would start to make up their own games and being the youngest of three sons we made up games and uh, my father was very keen on somebody called Harry Houdini. Hands up if you know who Harry Houdini was. <laughs> okay quite a lot of people. <laughs> Harry Houdini was the greatest escapologist of his time and he used to do all kinds of things. He would plunge into the water in New York or in London. He would be surrounded by chains and underwater with a deep breath. He would have to find a way to escape. He even had an act where he would bring a big container of water and he would be placed inside it on the stage in the theatre, in the King's Theatre, the Alhambra in Glasgow or wherever, and he would have to escape. So my family thought this was a great idea and we should try it. So we would get ropes and we would get bands and we would tie each other up. We would tie our hands and see how long it took us to escape and we'd tie us to things. And of course, sometimes you could get out really easily because I had the smallest hands, you'd manage to get out. But sometimes they tied you up in such a way that you were stuck there for a while and they thought this was great fun. They would point to you and they would go away and have a drink and a biscuit and you would be stuck, tied up. And that taught me a great lesson. The great lesson is that when you're free, 
you want to enjoy it. It's not so much fun being in captivity as it is being free to make your own choices. And that is the great story of the people of Israel. They kept remind, reminding one another, we were slaves in Egypt and we were set free. So think about all the terms. I've brought some for you. Bound versus unbound. Locked up versus set free. Captivity versus liberation. Enslavement versus release. Imprisonment versus emancipation. Confinement against release. Caged rather than being set free. And the image we've got here is a lovely image of a bird which has been caged and it is set free. And you can imagine the delight when a bird that hasn't been able to spread its wings, hasn't been able to do what it was designed to do, flying round the room, flying round the area, enjoying the sunshine and choosing what it was going to eat and when it was going to eat. The Christian faith is not about binding us down, it's about setting us free to be all we can be wherever we want to be the best we can be at our place of work, in our family, and at school too. So that is a message for today. And there's a lovely song which isn't in our hymn book, but we've put it on the screen so that you can sing it with us. It's the Spirit of God lives to set us free. Walk, walk in the light. And it invites us to think about being unbound and being completely free. Let's stand and sing that now. Thank you.
operate a tremendous children's program and Louise has taken the children out already but people from home it's really good to come and support the church's children's program if you can on a dry day please come along the first reading which Jane is going to share with us is from the Apostle Paul and he was showing his ability and his strength of faith but he also admits that he was pointing in the wrong direction. So let's listen carefully to that. Then you're going to hear some Mozart and then the tenants of the parable, the vineyard shared by Jesus himself. Jane. Let us hear the word of God. The first reading is taken from the New Testament, St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter three, and reading from verse four. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Amen.
The second reading is taken from the New Testament, St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, and reading from verse 33. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir, come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. May God bless to us the reading and hearing of his holy word, and to his name be all glory and praise. Amen. We know from watching our televisions just in these last hours that we live in a broken world. Ukraine, Israel, Palestine, Afghanistan, Libya. I'm going to suggest that we sing this very reflective and powerful hymn, Remaining Seated, to drink in its words and see what it says to us today. It's more of an intercessionary hymn. It's looking for wholeness, but also looking for healing, but admits the strength and difficulties of our world. It's hymn 721, We Lay Our Broken World. Please remain seated to sing this single hymn. Thank you.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. This service and sermon has three points. It's built around the vineyard and the first point is Jesus. Jesus is in the last week of his life. He is in Jerusalem, the city of and we know what's going to happen, and he knows what's going to happen, and he tells this parable. There's a weight to it. He says there was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall round it. It was thorough. He put a wine press in. He put up a watchtower to protect it. And then, as was the tradition at that time, if you were a powerful landowner, you lent it out. You rented it to some tenant farmers. At the time of the harvest, he sends, as was the tradition, a servant to collect his portion of the fruit. Common activity. Come harvest, you send somebody round to get your share of the proceeds. In this parable, you need to know that the landowner is God. Israel is the vineyard, the tenants are the religious leaders, and the servants are the prophets who from the beginning of time God has sent to try and keep the people of Israel on the right track because like people in every time they are very keen to go off and do their own thing. Jesus says this is how it works out. These tenants seized the servants, they beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. So he sent other servants. God is the owner of the vineyard. The point here is that God does not give up. He keeps sending servants to try and keep us all on the right track. God keeps sending, communicating, caring. But, you've guessed it, the tenants treat the servants in the same way. They're beaten, stoned, killed. So the owner decides, they will respect my son. And so he sends his son. And the tenants say to each other, this is the heir. If we kill him, we will take the inheritance. So they take the son, threw him out of the vineyard, and they kill him. Jesus asks, what then will the owner of the vineyard do when he comes? They reply, he will bring those wretches to a wretched end. Then he will rent out the vineyard to other tenants who will get a share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus makes the point that he wants the vineyard to be fruitful and he wants the people who receive the benefits to share the benefits with others rather like the harvest message. He actually says, The kingdom of God will be taken away from those tenants and given to a people who will produce the proper fruits. Produce the proper fruits. And Jesus is the cornerstone as we have in the images. He is the one who gives us the example. He is the one we can build on and they can build on because he was trustworthy and true and dependable. The first point in the sermon was Jesus, the cornerstone. The second point is Jimmy. I once met Jimmy Savile. It was 1981 and he was one of the most influential people in the entire United Kingdom. He was on the radio he played music. I love music and the radio. He was a TV presenter. Jim will fix it. I love the TV. 
he reads, was a fundraiser for Stoke Mandeville Hospital for disabled children. He was a charity worker. I respected people who were charity workers. He was close to his mother and he was a practicing Roman Catholic, a Christian. His actions appeared to be good, helpful, and generous. And so I was pleased to meet him when running a marathon, and I remember going to university on the Monday and saying, we completed the marathon, and you'll never guess it, we met Jimmy Savile. The truth, as you know, is somewhat different and there will be a TV series starting tomorrow, The Reckoning, which reveals another side to Jimmy Savile. I won't watch it because I find it very, very difficult to see people abusing their power and ill-treating children. When Jimmy died, he was praised in obituaries for his personal qualities and his work raised an estimated 40 million pounds for charities. But by 2014, Jeremy Hunt, our current chancellor, had to go in front of the British Parliament and make this announcement. Savile was callous, opportunistic, a wicked predator who abused and raped individuals, many of them parents and young people who expected and had a right to be safe. We held Savile in our affections, he says, as a somewhat eccentric national treasure with a strong commitment to charitable causes. Today's report show that in reality, he was a sickening and prolific sex abuser who repeatedly exploited the trust of a nation for his own vile purposes. Jimmy Savile to me was not a cornerstone, he was like rack concrete. It was always going to implode. Unfortunately, he got to the end of his life before that happened, but now all we can do is sweep that memory away and start again. Remember him, learn from him, but do not follow him. Jesus is the cornerstone. And the third point is thee and me and Paul. Paul sets out in life trying to do the right thing but is going in the wrong direction and the wrong direction. He is mentally able. He has tremendous gifts of energy and insight and communication but he's going in the wrong direction. Fortunately, he stops and changes and turns and heads in a new direction and he does so because of the cornerstone of his life, Jesus Christ. We are all called to do the same. This community in Cramond has been built on people who were quiet, caring, who brought those marvelous gifts of God's spirit, love and joy and peace, patience and kindness and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control to this community. That's why we've been here 13 hundred years. That is why together we can work in an enlarged parish and make a real difference to thousands of people's lives. It's obvious that we have to follow the way of Jesus Christ and not a predator like Jimmy Savile. But we have to remind ourselves and look and encourage the good gifts that God has given us. Gifts made for sharing. To close, I was chaplain at Leith Academy for 15 years and on one occasion, the chaplains organized the pupils to answer that question that we've all been asked. What would you like to be when you grow up? I was astonished and saddened when the majority of pupils said they wanted to be in the support team of a celebrity. 
celebrities, if you followed the history since the beginning of Hollywood before the First World War through to today, have often been people who have exploited others for their own benefit. Not all, but a lot have been carried away with the limelight. And being the support team for a celebrity is one of the most difficult jobs because they're often people who sway around with the breeze. It's not a popular thing to say, <laughs> but it is true. We want people who are displaying the characteristics, the calm, stable, honest, hardworking characteristics of the fruit of God's Spirit and who walk behind the cornerstone who is Jesus Christ, our Lord and friend. Let's reflect on these things as Simon plays for us. Amen. Let us praise the God who gives us these great gifts, gifts made for sharing. Let us bring our offerings and stand and sing, praise God from whom all blessings flow.
prayers of thanksgiving and for others, there'll be an opportunity to bring your own thoughts. There's also an opportunity to sing with the choir the final verse of Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, giving a different context from the first. Let us pray together. Gracious God, the source of all blessings and the provider of every good thing. As we look back on our personal journeys, we are grateful for knowing Jesus, who embodies your grace and truth. Through faith in Christ, we find righteousness and hope for the world. In times of trial and uncertainty, your love sustains us and your promises gives us strength. We thank you for your faithfulness throughout generations, guiding your people, the vineyard of the Lord, with your steady hand. Loving God, the comforter of the afflicted, we remember those who live in Israel, Palestine today, as violence and bloodshed affects that country once more. In the face of pain and suffering, we find hope in your promises and the assurance that you are with us. Hear our prayers for the brokenhearted and the suffering. We lift up those who are burdened with relationship distress or spiritual uncertainties. May they experience the hope and restoration that comes from knowing you. We pray for the lonely the oppressed and the marginalized, that they may find solace in your love and find justice and equity in our society. May your church be a beacon of hope, reaching out to those in need with compassion and practical support. We pray for our community and nation, for all who are facing hardships and challenges. Be with those who are seeking righteousness and guidance, that they may find realization of their hope in you. Strengthen the bonds of love and fellowship amongst us, that we may be united witness to your grace. Heavenly Father, the cornerstone of our faith and the source of all strength, as we prepare to depart from this gathering, let us carry with us the hope and assurance of your redemption. May the peace of Christ dwell in our hearts and guide us in all that we do. As we press forward in faith, may we forget what lies behind and embrace the call you have set before us. May our lives bear the fruits of righteousness as we seek to live your mission in this world. May we be instruments of your peace, spreading love, grace and justice wherever we go. Grant us wisdom and discernment as we navigate the challenges of our time. And may our actions bring peace, joy, and love as we pray together in Jesus' words, saying, Our Father, Father which art Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We close our service by singing, Son of God, eternal 
Saviour, and I hope these words and tune pick up some of the thoughts we've had in this service. It's hymn number 468, and we stand to sing. and the Holy Spirit rest upon us this day and remain with us forevermore. 